Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this tutorial, I am going to be using some mesh operations to find the intersection between some meshes. And then I'm going to draw a curve around those intersections and use that curve to drive a curve fall off, which will then be piped into the shader tree. And we can get effects like this over here. Where we've got this sort of pink halo around the intersection between the primitives and the plane. And this is live, so if I move this primitive, for instance, move it over here, you'll see that halo goes with it. Now, this can be used for a number of things, right? You can use this, for instance, if this plane was, let's just pretend it's water, and these primitives were rocks, you can use this to create a sort of a wet map around the rocks where the water is sort of lapping at the rocks and leaving a wet mark. Or you can even use it as a mask to mask in some moss or some sort of plant life around the edges there. You can even use the curves to generate particles or for further modeling operations. So, so it's a really useful trick to generate curves around intersections of meshes and then use those curves to get whatever effect you're going for. So why don't I just delete everything in the scene and start over and we'll do this from scratch. So let me uh, delete my curve fall off and I'll just uh, delete this whole guy here and I'm gonna delete this constant here and I'm gonna I'll just hide this for now and we'll just start from here. Yeah, I think that's about right. Let me just look at my scene. Yeah, I think we could just start right here. So we've got uh, a plane, a cube and a cylinder and I'm gonna press in for a new mesh item or you can just go add item and you know grab a mesh there if you're new to Moto. And I'm gonna call this merged curves because that's basically what it's gonna be. And then I'm going to pop open my little uh, mesh operation stack here. I'm going to add an operator and I'm just going to pin this here as we'll add several. The first one I'm going to add is just a merge meshes. And we want to use both um, for the source. We want to use both the cube and the cylinder. So I'll select both of those under existing. I could just kind of drag them over here to add source. And just to check to make sure everything's right, I've got my um, mesh curve or merged curves mesh item selected and if I isolate it by pressing this little button here in the viewport I can see it's it's both of these guys in the same mesh item now so I've got both these primitives merged into my merged curves mesh and then I'm going to add another mesh operation this time I'm going I'm going to be adding a solid drill so solid drill and the solid drill I want to use the plane as the driver surface so this plane let me just actually um, cancel out of this and unisolate this. So this plane I'm going to use as a driver surface. So solid drill, I want to use the plane and I want to make sure I set this to slice. And what that'll do is just as like a Boolean operation. Uh, so it's just slicing these primitives with the plane and it will get some edges there. So hit OK. And again, if I isolate my merged meshes here like this, you can see there's this you know line of edges here that is from the slice operation from the plane. Now I just want to turn these into curves. So again, I just add another mesh operation, edges to curves. What this will do is it'll create polylines. Now you can you can choose your curve type, you know, spline curves, whatever. Because this cube has 90 degree angles, I'm going to use polylines. And so it's just sort of a single poly edge there. But it's doing it among all the edges, right? And we just want to isolate it to the edges that were sliced into these. And we're going to, we're going to do that with a select by previous operation here. So under add selection, going to do a search for select by previous operation, select by previous operation right there. And the previous operation we're going to use is the solid drill. So select that in our drop down. And then, you know, each one of these nodes or most nodes in Moto will give you, you know, will feed a some result of their operation into the select by previous operation node. The solid drill gives us a couple options and what we want is intersecting edges. And you can kind of see them light up here a little bit. So that's what we're getting, the intersecting edges. And it's just drawing a polyline curve around those intersecting edges instead of every edge in the entire mesh. And there's one other little thing to tick here, and that is delete geometry. And so this, will, this will delete all the geometry but the curve. So hit that, and there we go. We've got a couple of curves that are just around the intersection of those meshes. And you kind of see, that, see them there in white right there. There's our curves, or let me just select them here. There's our curves in yellow there. And again, it's live, so if I move this around, it's just going to do that whole Boolean uh, slice uh, live, and it's just going to you know, give me that curve result wherever I end up transforming that. So there we go. And now that we have the curves, we are just going to use that as a fall-off to a constant layer. So I could go over here to the shader tree, 
And I'm just going to add a constant uh, uh, layer just for uh, an example here. We'll just make it pink like we did before. Boom, like that. If you don't want it showing up in the viewport, you can actually just unclick GL display so it's not all annoying and pink. And I'll pop open. I don't really need uh, this open anymore. And so I can close the mesh stack and I can open up a preview over here. There we go. It's all pink right now because this is just, you know, weighing over the top of the entire scene. But we're going to add a fall off in here, a curve fall off with those generated curves. So if you pop open the schematic and let's drag in our constant and double click the little yellow uh, diamond here by the texture locator. And so here's the texture locator. It's just this little guy right here. If you hit the plus right there, whoops. There's the texture locator right there. That's just the texture coordinates for um, this constant texture. But what it has is a fall off slot right here, <clears throat> right? And so we can do something like add a radial fall off or a syndrilical fall off. And in this case, we want to add a curve fall off. So we're going to add an item and we want a curve fall off. So it just happens to be coming up right here. But you can also just you know type in curve fall off. There it is. And whoops, got it. two of them in the scene now. Delete one of them. <laughs> and so there's our curve fall off, and it has a input for a curve. And the curve is going to come from our merged curve, so drag that into the schematic. You'll see this diamond is yellow, and if you're not familiar with Moto or not that familiar with it, if you double-click this, you'll get, you know, our mesh operations list here. You can see what's going on in the mesh operations list in the schematic. And here you'll see our merge meshes, our solid drill, and our edges to curve right here. So it's, it's kind of, you know, it's similar. It's going from the bottom up. You merge meshes, right? We do the drill to get that you know curve cut into it. And then we turn those or the, those edges cut into it. Then we turn those edges into curves. And we're gonna just pipe this into our curve fall off. So it wants a curve, so we'll give it a curve. There's our curve. And then we'll pipe the fall off into the uh, fall off slot here in the texture locator. Now you get kind of a weird result. <clears throat> it's actually kind of easy to explain. If you look at the curve fall off. Typically, we're not looking at the radius around the curve. We're looking at falling off along the curve from beginning to end. And these both these curves are closed, right? So they're both, you know, one's a circle, one's a square. And so we're getting this weird sort of uh, chunky gradient around it. We don't actually want to fall off around the length of it. We actually want it to be 100% around the length like that, which is going to give us this full sort of pink again because we're, our fall off is set to 100% everywhere. What we really want to use is this fall off by distance. This is a radius around the curve. So if I put this down to point 0.1 or so, and now this is the left-hand side is nearest the curve and the right-hand side is point 0.1 meters away from the curve. So I drag that down, then we get that fall off we're looking for. And it's live again. So that's pretty cool. So we've got that in the scene. Now what if we want to use this as a say a group mask in the shader tree? We have to finagle with it just a little bit more. Sometimes we get a little bit of a error in our Boolean operation. So if I look at merged curves right here and I just uh, isolate them, looks like there's a bit of an error in the Boolean operation. One thing you can do is triangulate things. Like you don't have to do this, but I, I bet if I triangulate the plane or the curve or the cube or both, I will um, get rid of that operation. Sometimes you can just actually move the cube around a little bit and it'll just sort of fix it there, it fixed it. So that's just a Boolean precision error. And again, sometimes those are a little more precise with um, if you triangulate the geometry. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to jiggle it and get rid of it. Now, you can imagine using this effect as a group mask would be a little more powerful. So let's do something like putting moss on here, or sort of my previous thought if these were rocks in a stream, something along those lines. And it works fine. We just have to adjust some parameters. So let me get a moss texture on top of my scene here. We'll just do that. So we've got our moss texture. And right now, our, our constant is still giving us this pink halo, but we want to use this as a group mask and not um, diffuse color. So if I drag it to the top of my group here. And so if I change this guy from diffuse color to group mask under shader control, group mask, you think that'd be great if it worked right away, but it doesn't. We need to uh, mess with a couple values here, but it does uh, work quite well once we do that. So right now, you see the value is set to 100%. We're actually going to go to 0%. We're just remapping the values, really. And here you see we're kind of getting the opposite of what we want, where we see the moss everywhere but the intersection. So we want to remap that. And we can do that pretty easily just with the, uh, the curve fall off. And you go to the curve fall off and click invert. And there you go. We've got moss right at the intersection. 
And, you know, of course, there's controls on the curve fall off to, you know, mess with this a little bit. You can go over here to the radius and change it to, you know, 0.05 if you want to scrunch it down a little. And you can do things like using the blend fall off to uh, blend in additional fall offs. You can also choose which curve you want to use with a curve fall off. Right now with the dot, 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 it's using everything. But I could just use the first curve, zero, or the second curve, one. Or if there's a whole bunch of them in the scene, you can use multiple ones. So there's a lot you can do with this. And like I said, you can use these curves as particle emitters. You can use them. Um, you can rebuild the curves with more vertices and use them as a sort of a texture rep or not a texture replicator, but a replicator source. So if you want to replicate little rocks around the you know intersections, you can do that as well. So there's a lot you can do with this technique. Um, but yeah, that uh, is it. So enjoy. Yum yum.